Good morning, friends. I hope this finds you well and warm. Today is the 26th day of uh, the Omer, which is three weeks and five days. And the mid of today of the 48 characteristics necessary to properly acquire the Torah is the concept of Isa uh, Seyag Litvarov, to make some sort of fence or boundary around one's words. We find this at the very beginning of Pirkei Avos in the charge at the beginning of the first chapter, uh, that uh, the rabbi should make a fence around the Torah. It's important to know one's limits. It's important to know what are healthy boundaries in relationships with ourselves, each other, certainly with the Torah and God. And part of what the boundaries provide, what the fences provide, is actually the capacity to have greater proximity without any sort of danger. So a person uh, is on a cliff and they want to come to the edge. So if there's a fence and a guardrail, so you can come right to the edge and a person is protected because there's a boundary. If there's no uh, protective boundary, so a person has to be much more proactive to make sure they're paying attention that they don't come too close. Um, and this is part of uh, the idea of, 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 of Kiruv, of coming close, and Archakos, different uh, things that perhaps distance us. But there's a concept within the mystical tradition that uh, these boundaries actually allow for a much greater intimacy, even from, particularly from a distance. Uh, one example that's brought down, uh, it's a safer called... Um, that when uh, Joseph was in Egypt and separated from his father, who he loved so much and he longed for so dearly, that when his brothers come back, he's constantly asking, asking, you know, is your father still alive? Uh, you know, what's with, the, what's with your father? That um, because he was separated and because he wanted to be, some close, be, be so close to him, that it was the distance itself that contributed to that sense of, of unity, that when he has two sons, Menashe and Ephraim, and they're finally reunited with Jacob's, uh, their grandfather, Jacob says to Joseph that they're going to be like my, my own children. And part of the understanding is that because Joseph was separated and he wanted to come so close that he was even closer uh, from that distance than, uh, than the other uh, than his brothers who were in physical proximity, uh, but didn't, because they were physically close, didn't have that sense of, of yearning of closeness. And so that's part of uh, the navigation of understanding what lane we're in. What is, what is a healthy space to be in? And one of the things that's really important as we go through every single day is to recognize that there are different parts of the day and there are different scenarios where we are more equipped to be in control, where we're more aware and in the best... Uh, position to make good choices. Uh, last night I was writing something and one of my kids was sick and so I was up very late and at 2.30 in the morning, uh, it's like not the best time to make choices. And sometimes a person is stuck, you have to make choices at 2.30 in the morning. Um, but if a person is able to, to be in control when, uh, when, things are, when they're at their best and they're able to proactively create these boundaries and these fences with redundancies in the system, so they're able to kind of incorporate, um, you know, what happens if things don't go according to plan. Um, because when we think about the choices that we've made that perhaps we've regretted, it's rarely the very last thing uh, in a series of events that is the, is the part that, uh, that we're so held responsible for. But it's all of the choices that, made, that brought us up to that moment. The Gemara talks about this in the, in the context of, um, of uh, a young man making poor decisions. And he gets all dressed up and he you know, has money in his pocket and he goes... To, uh, to a place to be able to pay for things which are not going to be good for him in the end, right? So, but the, the Gemara understands, so when the person walks through the door, right, all ready to, to, to transgress, um, like, is there really a choice in that moment? So we believe that, of course, a person has a choice, but the choices of, of sharing that intentionality of creating momentum to provide a uh, particular end uh, is actually much more impactful than the moment of testing later on. And so part of what happens when we make these fences is that we're declaring, actually, it's really important to me to stay healthy in all the different ways. And so I'm going to put these uh, these guardrails to make sure that, you know, if it's not safe to be driving for me at one o'clock in the morning, I'm going to make sure that I get somewhere, you know, at nine o'clock at night to make sure that, that I'm not going to be pulling up at 1259. Because if one o'clock, for example, is the, is, the, is the cutoff where it's no longer safe for me driving, and I say, okay, so if there's no traffic, I should be able to get there at, 10, at 1259. It's a poor set of choices. 
because life happens and rarely do things go according to plan. So part of uh, the process of acquiring uh, the capacity to uh, accept the Torah on Shavuot is also recognizing that it's not just the particular contours of what is appropriate in relationship to the text, that here is the, the harsh kind of cutoff and that's the cliff, but rather the recognition that, that with the Torah comes all sorts of preventative measures. That's the role of the rabbis in general is to uh, put fences around the Torah. Um, and we have a parallel in the physical world, not just in terms of physical safety, but um, also if we want to preserve and protect things that we care about. A person has a garden. So you want to make sure that there's a, people don't walk on the garden. So you put up a little fence to make sure that people understand, like there's, there's something here that's special. And when we think about human beings and we think about workers' rights and when we think about uh, every way in which there's systems where people can be literally or figuratively uh, trampled, it's important to put in protections. What's the, what are the checks and balances? Where's the transparency? Where's the redundancies in the system? If we think that uh, the Torah is important and we have to protect it and if we think of our souls as, uh, as being important and we have to protect it. That's the way in which the Torah warns many times, this past week's fire show in particular. The person has to be exceedingly careful to make sure that they're doing all of the things um, with, with a particular sensitivity to make sure that nothing bad happens. It's not just about not doing bad, it's about the preventative actions to make sure. And the more that we're preoccupied with, okay, so what does a healthy me look like? What does is, what is a healthy me at work look like? What does a healthy me in relationship with my friends look like? like? The more that a person is able to understand the kind of the pitfalls, where in the past, particularly yesterday, right? every day at the end of the day, we're thinking about, okay, what did I do well today? What didn't I do well? Where did I think that I was going in the right direction, but then I got distracted? Or what are the cycles that keep happening, even though it's not what we want? And what can we do to, to kind of get off uh, at the exit before the, the place where we get distracted or uh, we make poor choices? So that's part of uh, the preparation is actually feeling that as much as we're on the receiving end of the Torah, a person might think that that Kabbalah, that that acceptance is passive and being in any sort of partnership or relationship, there's actually an ask for us to be proactive. Uh, we see this, uh, we will, uh, we will do, and we will listen. You see this in, in Shabbos that there's the, the Shamar or the Zach, or there's the remembering and there's the, uh, and there's the guarding. You can't really have one without the other. Um, if, something is important, then it needs to be protected. You see this also in this week's Torah portion um, when it comes to uh, the partnership between the body and the soul uh, when somebody passes away, that uh, there's a recognition that uh, depending on the proximity that a person has in terms of the relationship to the person who passed away, even if they're a Kohen, they're able to come close, even though that normally they're at a distance um, from these types of um, spiritual um, voids, but there's a recognition that in certain circumstances, uh, even though a person is, is normally distant, they need to be close. And the converse is also true, that sometimes when a person is normally very close and it becomes clear that it's not healthy to be close anymore, so then a person needs to, to go at a distance. And so that's part of this exercise of finding the healthy balance, that we're all, uh, in, in the most ideal way, supposed to be in a very particular lane. At this moment, what is the most useful, productive, healthy, generative thing I could be doing or not doing. Maybe the most important thing for me to do right now is sleep. Maybe the most important thing. So there's this, there's this spectrum of like, okay, what is, if, um, if I was in complete control and it was a great day and I was well rested and well fed and, and nice and motivated, like what is the optimal use of me in this universe in this particular moment? And then there's a spectrum of, okay, it's not the, it's not the most ideal, but it's, it's certainly good. It's, it's a win. And then it moves down. It's really important to know like where are the edges that that are really important not to cross uh, beyond. And that's true in most areas of life, that we think about, okay, what's the healthy spectrum? What is the ideal range? Um, and when we think about the places where we um, are, are, are in relationship to that space, it can really actually help us think much more holistically of like, okay, where am I doing really well? Where am I falling short? Where are the places that actually like, I'm really, I'm really out of my lane. Like, this is just not good for me. It's not, it's not productive, it's not healthy, it's a waste of time. Um, and really thinking about the healthiest ways of being and trying to promote, like if this is going well, what can we do to ensure that? Like what do we do to the extent that we have a, a schedule that we're in control of? What time we wake up, what time we go 
go to sleep? Um, you know, what are we doing in between? Uh, a person can feel much more empowered that they're in relationship, where they're in um, in a dynamic with the text, with the ex- expectations of, of being a human in this world. Um, and in doing that by even just declaring this is what I want, it can really help provide some momentum and some some cushion to know that even if we're not at 100%, we're still in a place that's uh, not just appropriate, but that's deeply um, uh, that's deeply rewarding. I hope that. Everybody-